Alice in Truckerland. Man. Life, How are you? Life is life in over there, ain't it? Oh, yes. Wow. Well, it's been a minute uh, since the last time we spoke. I, I think the last time we spoke, we talked about the tattoo debacle. Uh, yeah. But uh, what what you been up what what you been up to since then? Like what what you what you been into, man? What's going on? Oh, just living that American dream of being broke, right? <laughs> <laughs> they say own a truck, it'll be fun. It'll be fun, you guys. <laughs> you said it's not fun at all. Are you still are uh, no. you are you still up in Minnesota? Yeah, I am. Oh my God. I I should have reached out to you, but I, I, I think a lot of stuff was going on with you uh last week. So uh but I was up there. I, I was up in Minnesota. I was up in Shakopee. Oh, and you didn't even say mention to say hi. Well, brought you I, up for lunch. Well, Dinner. I mean, next time, next time I'm up that way, I will definitely, definitely reach out to you so that we can get together. Maybe we can go over to Canterbury and play a couple of hands because that's where I'm at yeah. all the time. I was just there on uh, Thursday. What? Yeah, it was Thursday. I was there. Did you Did you do better than me? Because I, I was there. Wait. Hold on. First, oh, well, I wait, didn't wait, go wait, to wait, wait, wait. I delivered a load. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm about to say you said Thursday because I I want to say Wednesday. Uh, I want to say I, I want I really want to say Wednesday. I I think I think Wednesday I was I was there if I'm not mistaken. But but yeah yeah it wasn't. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a good night for me. I should have stayed my ass in the truck. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, it happens to the best of us. Yeah, I, I should have stayed my ass in the truck that damn night because, I mean, I, I was getting <laughs> I was getting coolered. Like, I, I would have the winning hand. I would I would bet the winning hand, and, and, and somebody always calling me with a chase down and and get that miracle card on the on the on the river and yeah yeah it, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't a good night for your boy that night man all right uh, so, i hear a lot of people don't have very good luck there yeah yeah so alice man um like i said life is life and um i i didn't i i didn't realize you you got married when when did you get married uh, a year ago, October first, a year ago. Okay, okay. Well, congratulations for that. All right. Thank because you. Because I, I didn't know you. I ain't, I ain't even realize you got married. Okay, now. Uh, how did you? Uh, well, how, how, how did you guys? Uh, how did you guys meet? I, I already see that he's a truck driver. So, how, how do two truck drivers meet? And and last uh, long enough in the relationship to get married. Let's talk about it. Oh, you know, mutual friends. You know, trucking is a small, small world. <laughs> Seems like everybody knows everybody, and that's how I met him. Through trucker groups or outside of trucking groups, outside of the Internet? Outside the internet, just going to like truck shows, meeting new people, friends, some friends with one person. Next thing you know, you're friends with like 10 more people. Then, yeah, just kind of stumbled upon each other from friends of friends. Hey, you guys need to meet. Okay. All right. So, Alice, being that you said you, you, you met them to the internet, do you feel like it's better to, I don't know, it's better to meet somebody? outside of social media than meeting somebody inside social media. What's your thoughts on that? I personally think it's better because anybody can be a keyboard warrior and tell you what you want to hear on the internet. 
Whereas if you meet them in person, know their friends first, and then meet them, it seems like a whole different can of worms open up, and it's so much better. I what I, I kind of feel the same way. That's why af- after what happened to me several years ago, uh, I, I I pretty much stopped. Like I, I don't want to date no no social media chick. I mean, you could be a social yeah. media chick, but it's like okay, like if if she's the type of person that likes to be transparent on on her social media, no matter what it is. Hey guys, this, that, and the other. Get ready with with me for my date, and this, that, and the other. I I don't think I want any parts of that because, say for example, of course, that's all if, for attention. Yeah, and if you break up with that person, then that person who you break up with is vilified. Blast you, yeah, and blast you all over, and no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, that's not for everybody. I mean, sometimes we get some successes out of out of uh, out of online relationships. Don't hey, don't don't sleep on it. I mean, you might just find that one. I know but many I, people that have done the online thing and had success, successful relationships, but then <laughs> I've known a lot of people that also got catfished on them. So yeah, yeah, most definitely, definitely that or. Some people just want to just want to be a part of the ambiance so they can like yes. get I, I I don't know. I don't know. But um so I, I want to say tragedy st- uh kind of struck you there. Um your husband's rig got caught on fire was that deliberate or what happened no he was underneath a load and uh we don't know what exactly happened so the insurance is tearing the whole truck apart to see what happened and honestly the length of his truck is probably what saved the rest of it yeah i see that he's uh he's one of those truckers that got that 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 long way in a maybe you can help me out but (laughs) <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I I thought it was just for decorations, but what? I mean, why would have an extended have an extended length like that? For him, it was because the size of loads that he was carrying, so it just gave him a little extra room to work with, especially in the tight quarters and stuff that he has to go into, and you can jackknife the hell out of that truck. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we yeah. I can definitely see that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. All right, so where where did the fire where did the fire start? Um, we don't exactly know. Um, like I said, he was just leaving the place that he got loaded at. He heard a loud bang, looked back in his mirrors, and the whole rear end was engulfed. Wow. Whatever it was, it shot the rear end up in the air and it landed and that's where it's at. I'm I'm looking at the picture. Was was he attached to a trailer or was he bobtailing? No, nope, he was attached to a trailer. He was able to use expire extinguisher to get the flames out just enough that he could pull the pin and get out from underneath it. Oh, okay, okay. So he was able to save the trailer. Yep. 600 pigs that he had on there. Okay. Whatever. Oh, he's a cattle hog. It was a lot. Yeah, he has hogs. Yep. Oh, he got bacon. Ooh. Yeah. That would have been some good that cooking. Been an epic fire. I love bacon. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been some good cooking right there, boy. <laughs> but uh, he was he was able to save the uh, the livestock. Um, yes, he was. All right, so he and you also said he was able to save the cab of the truck, which is a good yeah. thing as well. So uh, now is the truck in the in the shop or where is it at now? Uh, we won't know for another week or so, depending upon what insurance says. Being that the truck was a salvage truck and we built it, if the insurance 
totals it, it's a complete loss, and we won't have nothing. Oh my God! So there's no there's no buying it back, which kind of sucks because you invest your entire life into building something, and then they do that. And and you kind of say to yourself, "Is like, what is the point?" Uh, but I mean, we built it for his dad. You know, his dad passed away two years ago, and that was a project that they were going to do together, and we just finished it last year, last last year, April. So. If the insurance totaled it out, would they would they keep the truck? Because by yep, the looks they keep the truck and you can't part it. Oh, because that back panel right there is so sweet. Yeah. I think that's like what, a dedication to his father right there? Yeah. His dad and I came up with that. I I put it down on paper and then sent it off to a guy and had him put it on there. Oh my god. I did. I, I would hate to see you guys lose that because that that looks so beautiful right there. Yeah, I mean, we just put in so much money into that truck this year because we just redid the entire front end. We just put on new tires two weeks ago in the back, so that's like fifty eight hundred dollars for new tires for new drive. Just put new fenders on there. We were just gonna redo the whole catwalk and stuff, repaint the whole frame, and everything was set to go in a couple of weeks, and then that all happened. You know, and of course the insurance company is like, "Well, is it gonna be? Did you do this on purpose? Because there's so many truck people that own trucks that are just going belly up right now. So the best, like they're just lighting their trucks on fire just to get out from it. You know." I mean, why would we do that when we invested all this money and all this time into a truck to have it just yank from us? Yeah, that that would be that that would be a sad, sad situation right there. And well, not only yep. not not only people that's setting trucks on fire because they want to uh, they they want to get in on the insurance fraud. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got you got regular people that's that's trying to get up from up under their cars, and what then? What's the first thing to do? We'll have somebody yeah. to come and take it and put it in the field and set it on fire and just play stupid. So, yeah, yeah. I, I I I know all. But I, I mean, seriously, why would anybody do that when you're underneath a load, especially livestock? That's crazy. You you say he heard a loud bang. So is could it be possible that he ran over something or? Nope, there was nothing on the road. He said his 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 gauges went all wonky on the truck, and next thing you know, he heard a loud bang. The whole back end lifted off the ground, slammed back into the ground, and there it sat. Wow, I know that must have been a scary feeling right there. Oh, yeah, because when I got the phone call, hey, come get me, I was half asleep. So I had to get up early the next day, and he was just like, come get me from here, which is like three and a half hour drive from me. And he didn't tell me any information. He just said, truck was on fire, come get me, and where he was, and I just booked it on there. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad he was able to. To, to save at least part of it may, maybe if the insurance don't total it out is that is that what you guys hoping for that that they don't total it out i mean what you guys hoping for for all this to happen we're hoping, we're hoping they don't we're hoping they don't i mean granted it's going to be about fifty thousand to replace the whole rear end and cut the frame and shorten it now but it is what it is but that's so Worst case scenario, we would rather do that and keep the truck. Now, if they There's do, a lot of sentimental value right there. Now, if they do total it out, of course they're gonna take the truck. How, how much are they talking about giving you guys? Because, like you said, you put uh -huh. a lot of you you put you put a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of sweat, and of course the insurance ain't gonna offer you nothing but crumbs, but what are they offering? And when they did, they got the feds to bail out their bad insurance swaps, a hundred cents on the dollar. Pretty much. Um, it's unknown at the moment, but they said between 40 and 50,000. 
one that has a brand spanking new motor in it that we just put in as well. So that's 50 some thousand dollars right there. 25,000 or so in the front end that we just put in and now we got the rear end we got to replace and I mean for what it was insured for we aren't getting even half of that. Hell, they that they they not the even case. give they not even giving you enough money to to, to buy a new no. truck. I got no, you a I dollar. Know. Oh, you almost had it. You got to be quicker than that. Oh, Having oh, insurance oh, 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 isn't the insurance is such a scam. <laughs> That's crazy. It ain't even it's not a, like, you know, a, a, a car off the dealership lot where you can get gap insurance and all that stuff to pay for any of, like, a totaled out vehicle, you know, to cover all that. Trucking is, you know, an ice cream over left and right. Wow. I, I am so sorry to hear that, but I am also glad uh, that your husband is all right. He's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Alice, man, this this is reality right here, for real, for real. Like anything can mm -hmm. happen while you're out on this road. What do you got to say to these to these pretty people out here that's that's making trucking a trending thing now? Like, what's your thoughts on all it on all of this TikTok trucking stuff that you see? Um seriously kind of gross and irritating because there's so many out here that are doing it because they love it and they're just going in it for a paycheck and trying to make it look glamorous you know we have no truck short you know truck driver shortage but yeah let's throw more people in here so that our rates go to shit are you still trucking what's what's your status yep i'm still driving i'm yep I have my own truck and I haul flatbed steel. Oh, look at that. Tattoo goddess flatbedding over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. All right. Um, how for, for a female that's, how, how long you been flatbedding and, and how is it for a female? Um, I've been, well, I've been leased onto this company for three years, but I've pretty much done a lot of this my entire life. That's what I started out in. But females in it, I don't know. Like, I'm a part of a bunch of female truck driver groups and female flatbedding groups, and it just, the things that I read on there, I just, if you can't do the job or if you're going to bitch and complain about it, don't do it. It's not for everybody. What made you get into flatbedding? Because I believe when I first met you, you was, you, well, of course I met you from J&R Shrugal, but uh, yeah. you, what, what made you get into flatbedding? I like a good challenge. I like to be pushed to my limits and a good challenge on a daily. All right. So, of course, uh, Minnesota, and we know that the weather is can be cumbersome <laughs> up there so uh what, oh, what's the chat what's the challenges for you flatbedding in those type of weather up there um i love winter so it doesn't really bother me all that much it's just the slippery tarp that you're dealing with the slippery steel that's cold as hell i mean it has its, it, it, I mean, it has its good and bad. Your straps are frozen, and you got to wind them up, and it's pain in the butt. But eh, I enjoy it. Where did you Where did you go to, to to get your training? And what was the company? Was it like one of those starter companies, like Maverick, Decker? Where Where did you go to get your training? Um, nowhere. <laughs> okay. Everything was self taught or by my dad and his brothers. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I know. I I never had to go to the CDL school stuff or any of that training stuff. Okay, but you, you, you would recommend a person that hasn't had no flatbed experience. In today's world, absolutely. So there's so many that I see that don't know how to do what they are doing, and it's dangerous i just read a thing the other day about some someone posted 
how often are you supposed to check your straps? And it was somebody, there's how many that answer, oh, I don't check them. Like, I'm just going to A to B to wherever I'm just like, what are you hauling? Like, your straps become loose. You should be checking them at least, you know, 100 miles, 150 miles. And these people are just, nope, I don't check them. I just let them go. I only check them if there's a strap flapping in the wind. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, haven't you all seen the movie Final Destination? Like, <laughs> I, I I don't I, I don't think they. And those seen are the it. people that drive with us on the road. I, I I don't think they I don't I don't think they seen it. I I seen a TikTok of somebody that was inside the truck talking about two young ladies uh uh trying to strap down or whatever they was doing and and yeah I mean you get a lot of people that come into Facebook groups that don't understand or don't know or haven't even been trained right to be asking questions that they should already know. You should well, already. You think it's cool. They teach you, you know, like load distribution or like how to, you know, distribute weight on something. Like, I mean, I mean, I remember in school where you took a pencil and you balanced it on your finger, you know, like, Obviously, if one side's heavier than the other, your weight distribution is way, you know, whatever. And, like, some of these people have not a single clue. Or they have, like, no idea how to, like... All right, bake it. Hop in the flatbed. Oh, I was saying they don't teach anything in school these days because the law of inertia or any science of any sort, like physics, is not taught, apparently. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy that... I, I'm in so many Facebook groups and I, again, I get so many questions that people even hit me up in the emails and be like, well, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And, and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, bro, did you learn all of that in school? I mean, when I went to school, the first thing we was taught about, uh, about weight distribution, we was taught about, uh, uh, Tan, uh, not tandems, uh, what tandems being 34, drives being 34, and the 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 steers is 11, but we can we can finagle them up until 13. So right. I'm like, when people come in the Facebook group and they show their scale ticket and they ask, is, is this is okay? Uh, it's where where's my tandem supposed to be if I'm a thousand pounds over? Is this all right? Like, are you supposed to you know, know this stuff. A lot stuff. of things can be found on Google, even. Right, right. If, I don't know. It blows my mind. All right. Uh, of course, Minnesota is not considered a chain state, um, but Minnesota do get a get an abundance of snow. So. Uh, do you chain up up there? And if so, do you know how to chain? Do you know how to chain, right? Yeah, I know how to chain, but I've only done it, what, twice in my career? To me, if you got to chain up, it's really not worth your life to even do it. I mean, what's that going to get you over the mountain that much sooner? And all those ding-dongs that are going over it, driving at 50 miles an hour, and their chains are flying off, and sparks are flying everywhere? <laughs> they weren't taught that either yeah that that could be dangerous too i i chained up once um it wasn't uh it, it wasn't because i needed to uh needed to change well yeah yes i did i was down in uh i was down in texas one of the states that don't have a freaking uh snow plow when it slows down there yeah I was I was on the incline, and uh, I called I called the city, asked them can they send a salt truck or something, and they wasn't able to do that. And yeah, I had to get out and 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 slap them chains on just to get up just to get up a small incline. And and yeah, it's I can yeah. imagine how they're a great it, tool to have and great tool to learn with. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. mean you can get out of some predicaments that you don't have any other option so i mean even mud oh yeah for sure for sure all right well all right alice in trucker land thank you very much for having to sit down with me today i really do appreciate it my favorite tattoo trucker 
uh, you definitely stay safe out there. And uh, and as for your husband, man, tell him I I, I wish for, I, I wish more for him. Uh, I'm I'm sure. What do he have to do now? He had to. He he's renting the truck or the company that he's pulling yeah. for is, gave him a, a a loaner truck until he is get fixed. I uh, know we rented a truck. Gotta keep on moving. They're expensive. But I gotta keep on moving. But I mean, the advice that I can tell anybody that wants to get into the industry. I mean, we've been in this for how long, but. The people that are new that think this is a get rich quick thing, it's not. And if you don't have that money in the bank, because things like what just happened to us, if we didn't have the money to fall back on to recoup all that and to fix what we were doing, it would just shoot out the door and everything you worked for was gone, you know? So a good savings, you know, if you're going to go into it, make sure you have a good savings. Yes. I, always great conversations with you, man. Big cheese got it locked. Won't you let me all know?